This week on Let's Fish TV, we're at Lake Kiwi in the western part of South Carolina. Let me tell you guys, this is a gorgeous body of water. It sits just over 18,000 surface area acres. And let me tell you, it is just a cool body of water. Super clear water has a great abundance of spotted bass and largemouth bass. And from what I've heard, some really, really big largemouth bass. Today, we're gonna be targeting those fish that are feeding on herring and small bait fish that are schooling. This lake is known for its schooling action. Never been here before, but I have great expectations and I think we're gonna have a good day. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. That is a fish. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southeast region every week. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Woo! This is Let's Fish. Welcome to Let's Fish TV. I'm your host, Andrew Upshaw, and today we're at a very special place called Lake Kiwi. Lake Kiwi is located in the western part of South Carolina and it is loaded with really nice bass. Today we're gonna to be targeting those bass, spotted bass and largemouth using a variety of techniques from drop shots, soft plastic jerk baits and top water. From what I'm told, there's a bunch of herring and a bunch of shad here, so I expect a lot of schooling action. We also have this week's fishing report from your local region from our insider reporter. In the meantime, I'm gonna get this boat launch, get everything set up, and toss it back to the studio for your weekend planner. Thanks so much for joining us. These salooner tables are predicting fair game fish activity on Saturday and good activity Sunday. Peak game fish activity begins around 9.51 Saturday and 10.26 Sunday morning. Nighttime activity will begin around 10.01 on Saturday and 9.34 Sunday night. Depending on your location, the sun will rise around 7.50 and set around 6.34. And evenings will have a moon that is 91% visible. Stay with us, we've got fishing reports from across the area on the way. Plus, I'll return with professional bass fisherman Todd Castledine, who's stopping by to answer your Ask the Pro question. Today on Let's Fish TV, we're at Lake Kiwi in the western part of South Carolina. We're at that fall transition, and we're starting to get those colder nights. It was really cold last night, 46 degrees. Got a lot of fog this morning, but dead slick calm and high sun. So that's gonna be a really good day. We're gonna be chasing herring fish. I think we're gonna have a really fun time out there on Lake Kiwi. I've never been here before. I just got done practicing Lake Hartwell, and the fishing is fantastic there right now. I have a feeling today is gonna be a good day. Let's get out there and see what we can do. There we go. Oh man, four pound line guys. Nice spot of bass. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, we're here at Lake Kiwi and I just, I'm gonna tell you one thing guys, I really love catching spotted bass and this place has an abundance of spots. But one other thing it really has is big largemouth bass. So if you get around this area, and let's just say for instance, you're around that, that Columbia area and you wanna fish something that maybe isn't getting near the pressure as like a Hartwell or Lake Murray, you should come out here to Lake Kiwi. It has a good abundance of fish. You can catch them fairly easy. Now granted, I picked up my four pound line rod because I just really wanted to see if I could catch one on it. But you can get away with seven, eight pound test, 10 pound test on your drop shot. And that's what we're doing today is drop shotting and this is a nice spot. You know, I'm having to take my time a little bit with it because it, it is such a light line. And you just want to play them a little bit. But, oh man, check that out, guys. Not a bad spot of bass right there. And, you know, we're here in the western part of South Carolina. And, you know, there's this big misconception that, that fish don't bite as good this time of year because of that transition you know lakes are starting to turn over and the fishing's starting to get a lot tougher but all you have to do is pick up something like a drop shot and catch some fish now on a lake like like kiwi like hartwell like lanier uh, some of these places that have all these herring in them one thing you have to have at your availability at all times is a drop shot rig just a simple drop shot rig we have it nose hooked with a little four and a half inch worm nothing too crazy 
But the reason you have to have this, so I started out with a, a soft plastic jerk bait, like a fluke and a top water. These fish are chasing herring all over, but when they get really pressured, or let's just say, for instance, they get inactive, and you can watch your active target, you can see how the fish position. If they're sitting really high in the water column, that's when you want to throw your flukes, your top waters, things like that. But when they get sink down to the bottom, like they are today, that's when you pick up a drop shot, a shaky head, a jig. In this case, I just always tend to go to the, the drop shot. It's just so consistent. I tend to get a lot of really good bites on it. And here at Kiwi, it's definitely one of those baits that you got to have in your arsenal to catch your fish. But I'm going to tell you guys, fish are biting, and I can't wait to get back out there. So I'm going to go drop me in down a little bit more, see if I can catch me another one. Hey y'all, welcome to my favorite part of the show, the Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia Coastal Fish Report. This segment's brought to you by me, Captain Patrick Garmerson with Ugly Fishing. You can check out my website at uglyfishing.com. You can book online and you can also have some money saving opportunities there on the homepage with Salt's Gone, Pure Flats Fishing, and LureNet.com. Cooper Garmerson here, my son, fishing partner, he's bringing us the Alabama Report. What do you got for the Alabama Report this week? Um, we've been catching a lot of flounder and we've been catching a lot of them on structure like rocks, sucking boats. Flounder season is going to be closed for the month of November. Yep, so once November rolls around, you're going to have to go to catch and release only, but these flounder should be around for a good little while and provide a lot of good, fun, hard Hard thumps, if you know what I mean. Uh, on those flounder, it's a lot of fun uh, catching them on jigs, and we're catching them on live bait as well. Along the Georgia coast, I talked to Tim Cole with Spartina Adventures. He said that the speckled trout bite is really getting good around that area. He said shrimp under a popping cork is a way to get the numbers. In the Mississippi coast, I talked to Ronnie Daniels, Fisherman's Guide Service. He said that the Speckle trout bite is like a yo-yo right now in the Bluxy Marsh. He said one day it's up, one day it's down. He said when it's down, it's really bad. When it's up, it's really good. Uh, he said, but the Bay St. Louis area is really full of life, catching a lot of different fish species. He said as many as six, eight, and 10 different fish species using live shrimp around dense structure, uh, similar to what Cooper's talking about in our area, around those rocks, stumps, anything where you got a lot of dense structure. We're also finding a lot of fish around glass minnows as well. So you find those glass minnows, you can probably get you some good action on a lot of our inshore species. Thanks for stopping in, checking out this report. Y'all keep what you need, leave the rest, and God bless, guys. There we go. Er, hooked up. Oh, God. God. These dang spotted bass pull so hard, it's ridiculous. I mean, even for like a two pounder, two and a half pounder, these things just pull like they're stripers, just big ones. And this is a pretty good spot here. And I'm only using like four pound test. And, and honestly, I'm just doing that just to get more bites. This time of year, you can get a lot more bites by using lighter line. Kiwi's definitely one of those places. I mean, it has a good abundance of fish, those real hard fighting spotted bass. And that's what you want. Oh, let's get down here and grab this. Another nice spotted bass. Check that out, guys. Look at the bellies on these things. And that's one thing I always admire about these spots, especially here, is they always have big bellies. And that's from eating all these herring at a place like this. Let's get these pliers. Oh, there we go. But we're here at one of my favorite times of the year, and that is that fall to summer transition. I mean, look at the belly on that. Just big old knotted belly. Nice spotted bass, not a huge one, but golly, they fight hard. You know, the deal is, is when you get out here, having an active target, having that forward facing sonar really makes a big difference, especially this time of year. You know, what happens is, is in the summer, they'll start tucking back in these, these pockets and as actually as the winter progresses, they start moving back out. And that's what we're starting to see is these fish are starting to migrate back out to the main lake. And what they're doing is they're migrating out to these real long flat points and they're feeding up on these big schools of herring. I actually just drop the troll motor as soon as I get to a spot and I'll start scanning around and I won't even pick up a rod and I'll just scan and scan. 
and I'll see a brush pile or I'll see a school fish or I'll see the bait fish and I haven't spooked the fish. I haven't idled over it back and forth and done all that. I've just pulled up on my active target, looked out there, and I can tell the mood of the fish by just pointing that active target at them. I can see if they're active, inactive, if they're grouped up, if they're scattered, or if there's even bass there at all. It really is a cheat code when it comes to bass fishing. And when you get on a place like Kiwi, Hartwell, Murray, Lanier, Smith Lake, it is a cheat code. It definitely makes fishing a lot easier. And, and it just helps you break down water so much faster. I've been here now about an hour today. We've already started catching the fire out of them. I've already lost a couple really nice ones, caught a couple really nice ones. This place has them. I can't wait to get back out there. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lose, Feel the Difference, Mamba Boats, Ride with Pride, Strike King, Tie One On, Glacier Glove, Stay Outdoors Longer with our gloves, hats, and shades, Fishing Specialties, makers of the premier mount assembly for live sonar. There we go. Check out the size of that spot, guys. Now that's the kind that we are looking for here at Lake Kiwi. That's a nice spot there. Oh man. That's one thing about when you get around these herring fish, they're bigger than usual. And this one is one of those. Golly, man, he destroyed that caffeine chad. I think I barely have him hooked though. Man, oh man. Let's see here, there we go. Check out the size of that spot, guys. Now that's the kind that we are looking for here at Lake Kiwi. Check it out, my goodness. Just a nice spot of bass, got him hooked perfect. So that pearl white caffeine shad, big bass. I mean, guys, it don't get much better than that right there. Get this fish back real quick. Let me tell you, so I've been out here, I've been drop shotting, I've been catching a lot of bass today, I mean just a bunch. And I look out there at my active target, and what did I tell y'all earlier? You have to pay attention to the depth of which the fish are sitting. I see a school of fish swimming about five foot under the surface. That's when you wanna get the caffeine shad, or top water, it just kinda depends on how the fish are biting. Uh, today, you know, when you get on a place like this, the caffeine shad just so deadly. Um, and just rigging it with a straight shank hook and a little swivel in the front to get a little bit more depth. But the deal is with the caffeine chat, it's all about having the right presentation. So one thing about it, what I like to do, throw it on spinning rod, you throw your cast out there and you're reeling it and you're twitching it, you're reeling it and twitching it. That's the way these herring react in the water. So you have to match it. It's not just sitting there twitching it real slow and going real slow. You have to fish fast. And when you see them coming on that active target, you don't slow down. You just keep going. And then they're going to bite it. I mean, that right there, I actually hooked one on my first cast. It was a really nice bass. I saw the school had moved towards me, paid attention. I just flipped my caffeine shad to where the school was. I saw them resurface, and of course, they ate it as soon as I threw it. So, but here in a minute, we're gonna talk about color and why it's so important. But I'm gonna tell you guys, I gotta throw it back out there and see if I can catch another one. Hey guys, this is your Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi fishing report. So let's go ahead, let's cast, and let's get started. So right now in Tennessee, Douglas Lake is fishing really good. The lake's low, temperatures are dropping, it's getting cold, those bass are starting to chase shad up shallow. They're on those flatter points, flatter banks, and starting to go to the backs of the creeks. I promise you throw a white buzz bait, swim bait, and crank bait, or a white jackhammer, I promise you'll catch big bass doing that. Let's go ahead, let's jump over to Alabama. The Coosa River, the Coosa River chain, the whole river system is fishing phenomenal. The spot of bass are on fire, they're eating top water, they're eating shad, they're eating big crawfish. So right now, go throw crankbaits, spinner baits on cover with wood, or go throw it on rock with the current ripping through it. I promise you, you guys will catch big spot of bass doing that. Let's go over to Mississippi. 
Right now in Mississippi, Sardis Lake is fishing really good. You guys can go catch big catfish in the deep creek channels. Go find the structure, go find those hard bottoms. And I promise if you go find those humps on your 2D sonar, I promise you'll catch big old catfish. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. See you guys next week. Now stay safe, God bless, and tight lines. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury. Go boldly. Lorenz, America's number one fish finder. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan or book your fishing charter at orangebeach.com. Motor Guides Tour Pro with GPS Anchor, powered by passion. Coastline Trailers, built by fishermen for fishermen. Here we go. Oh, there we go. That's a nice one. Another nice spot on the drop shot. No, it's a yeah, it's a spot. That was a large mouth for a second. God, it's another nice one. We have the fire. We have these fish fired up right now. We got them chasing caffeine shads, eating drop shots. It's just, just an unbelievable time here at Kiwi. You know, like I said earlier, I've never been in this body of water before, but. You know, what I wanted to do today was to prove to y'all guys that you can go to a body of water you've never been to before and use a lot of the same tactics. So, you know, one thing I did is I got on the internet and I and I, all I did was some simple research, you know, like a simple Google search of what type of forage was in this body of water. And I found out it had herring like Hartwell and some of these others. And I knew immediately that I'd be able to catch some really nice fish fishing the, the way that I like to fish for herring, you know, throwing a caffeine shad, throwing a drop shot. And it honestly hasn't really disappointed me. I mean, there's a lot of really nice fish here. And you shouldn't be scared to go to a new body of water and try something different from time to time because you're gonna be surprised how many fish you catch. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's a nice one. Golly. Man, oh man, this place is a very, very special place. I might actually get in trouble uh, by the locals here because I uh, might be exposing it a little bit too much. Um, Cause this is a really nice bass here. And what's crazy is the one I had on earlier was way bigger. Look at the size of this spotted bass. Check that out, guys. Wow. Just choke that caffeine, Chad. You know you're throwing the right color when they're choking it like that. I always believe that, especially on these schooling fish like this. I ate my tail off of it and everything. But a nice, nice bass. Guys, today has been just one of those magical, magical days here fishing for spotted bass in South Carolina. Lake Kiwi has shown out. It's definitely a place that I will 1,000% come back to. It has such a healthy population of bass. And I mean, just a lot of really nice fish. Overall, an unreal trip, throwing a two-prong approach. And, and typically, if you watch my show, you watch Let's Fish TV, you know I'm all about the two-prong approaches. The drop shot and the caffeine shad today were lights out. Uh, I didn't even need another rod in the deck and I have all of them on here. But those two rods got it done for me today. Let's get this fish back real fast. Throwing the caffeine shad, and rigging it the way that I was, I was able to utilize a little bit lighter line and catch a lot of these fish that were out here schooling. But, you know, using your active target, paying attention with your active target to how the fish are reacting is a really big key out here. If they're sitting high, use the moving bait. If they're sitting low, use the drop shot. And utilizing both techniques to catch a great number of bass. So let's head back to the ramp. Let's get everything rigged back up. I've got a tournament tomorrow. So I've got to get everything ready for Hartwell, but I hope y'all enjoyed today's show. Hope you learned how to find and catch them here. Let's get back. We're going to talk about how to rig your caffeine chat. And you don't want to miss that because it's a tricky little way to catch them. So y'all stay tuned. We'll see y'all here in just a minute.
Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Academy Sports and Outdoors, making it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Visit Mississippi, Wanderers Welcome, Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Balls Out, Made in the USA, Heavy Duty Mounts for your fish finders. Welcome back everyone. Let's get right on over to your Ask the Pro question for this week. This week, Hayes would like to know, what technique works best to catch bass in late fall and early winter? For an answer, we asked professional bass fisherman Todd Castledine. One of my favorite ways to catch fish late fall, early winter, is throwing a big plug. Really, a big old crankbait. Not just your regular crankbait, guys. At least an 8XD or even a 10XD. I like to throw this 8XD. I like to have a couple colors in there. I switch out between a green gizzard, blue and chartreuse, even a real shad. Here's the deal though, guys. I throw this for one reason, size. So that way, I'm not worried about how deep I go. Usually around that time, they're really not all that deep. So I'm just going for the profile. I want a big profile, which means I can get away with a lot heavier line. Most guys are always trying to go crank with 10 or 12 or 14. I throw 20. Like I said, I'm not worried about trying to get any deeper. I'm just trying to throw a big plug get it down there, man, hopefully catch some big old bass. Thanks so much, Todd. If you want some help from one of the pros, simply go to letsfishtv.com, follow that Ask the Pro link to submit a question of your own. Here's today's Right Stuff, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Today on Lake Kiwi, I used a two-prong approach to catch my bass. And you know, I talk about that a lot, but it's really important to utilize a couple of different techniques so you don't get locked in on one or the other. But using my active target today, I was able to figure out if the fish were sitting high or low. In the situation when they're sitting low in the water column, I was using a drop shot, just a standard four inch worm and a pink color. Like I talked to you about before, you only need about three colors, pink, green pumpkin, and a shag color when you visit South Carolina. And that's what I was using today. A quarter ounce to three eighth ounce weight, didn't really matter today. Four pound test line. I just like drop shotting with tiny line, guys. I know it's kind of crazy, and some of you are gonna look at it like, oh my gosh, I'd never do that. Uh, the Hyper Mag Speed Spin Spinning Reel, this has by far become one of my favorite spinning reels I've ever used. It's super smooth drag. It's by Luz and they've definitely stepped up their spinning reel game. Now, the most fun I had today, and there's just no question about it, was actually throwing the caffeine shad. And this one's actually missing the bottom half of its tail. Here's one that actually has its full tail. And as you can tell, it's missing the, the back half of it. But the way I'm rigging it is I'm actually using a straight shank hook, a flipping hook. And this is a two alt size hook. And as you can tell, I'm running it straight through the bait and coming out the back. This is gonna help you increase your, your hook to land ratio. This is what they call finesse heavy cover hook. So it's a smaller diameter hook. So you can use a spinning rod and still get that hook penetration. Eight pound leader with a swivel right here. The swivel is attached to 10 pound uh, Strike King Contra braid. That swivel is gonna add just a little bit of weight to help keep that bait down when you're fishing it real fast. And I was actually using a new rod by Luz. It says a, a 7.2, uh, I think this is the Mark Zona 7-2 Extra Fast Tube Cracking Special Rod. This is just one of the, my favorite rods. It has a little bit more length. And when you're fishing that caffeine shad, you want a rod that has a little bit more length so you can set the hook and get those fish in the boat. Guys, I hope y'all enjoyed today's episode here at Kiwi. I hope you learned how to find and catch a few of those spotted bass. Until next time, I'll see you on the water.